little buggers. You guys are okay. Please remain calm. There are so many little gummy frogs in here. Right under my nose. I've been looking for this frog everywhere and they're just sitting there the whole time. Well everybody, the moment of truth is finally here. You may recall in December of last year, I spent several weeks crafting, planning, putting together a glass frog paludarium. I don't know why I'm pointing this way, it's behind me. Thankfully it's kind of blurred still because I don't want you to see it just yet. And at the end of that video, I let you all know that we were gonna let it grow in for several months before introducing my glass frog into their new home. Well, the time has come. In today's video, we're gonna be doing an update on that enclosure. I'm gonna show you how it's grown in, all the different plants that have taken over like a beautiful verdant jungle, and then we're going to introduce the frogs into their new home. If you're interested in seeing these animals, you wanna watch them settle in, hunt maybe, we'll try and get some nighttime footage, then definitely consider watching this video. My name is Dion, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and digging that little notification bell after so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post one to two videos a week, as well as several YouTube shorts. Thanks. Well, my friends, here we are. It's been nearly seven months since the completion of this paludarium, and it has grown in immensely. Look at that. Many of the aeroids have attached themselves to the background. The bromeliads have anchored themselves to branches with their own roots, have developed vibrant coloration, and are even reproducing through pupping. The Rapidophora is nearly doubled in size and produced plenty of foliage. The same can be said of the Philodendron Melanochrysium, offering the frogs climbing and hiding surfaces. Lush tropical moss mix is thriving and spreading across the paludarium. This enclosure has an excellent source of airflow, which we will discuss further in the video, and as such must be misted several times a day to achieve and maintain a proper ambient humidity level and ensure that plants and mosses don't dry out. Upon completion of the build in the last video, I added a small aeration and circulation pump to keep water moving and clean. I also added a few aquatic invertebrates to the paludarium. These animals will help with cleanup too. With the majority of plants flourishing and growing quite large, it should be ready to house frogs. Or is it? Because we do have a little problem we need to address. A problem that if left unchecked, could be fatal. Temperature. You see, Hyalinobotrachium fleshmani is native to the tropical Americas. In fact, it happens to be the most populous glass frog species found in Costa Rica. In 2022, I traveled through Costa Rica on a herping expedition I organized. My companions and I were fortunate enough to document several species of glass frog throughout the country, giving me a better grasp of their habitat, temperature, humidity requirements, and more. These animals prefer high humidity, but it's also important that their habitat has good airflow and shouldn't be allowed to get too stagnant. It's about 90% humidity, it's still 25 degrees out. Uh, they prefer some some spaces, some very small crib, and it's kind of hard to get them. But this species, Hilarobatrachium talamanca, they are very common in this crib, but they are not that common in the other areas near where you come. So temperature, you heard Mike before. He said 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It is incredibly important that we don't let these frogs overheat. How does this translate back to the paludarium? Well, I started taking temperature readings of different parts of the enclosure. Not too bad here in the lower parts, but as soon as I started taking readings for the top of the enclosure, I was concerned. Although I have no doubts the frogs can handle low 80s Fahrenheit, I prefer to stay in the 70s, so it's time to devise a plan to maintain a lower temperature. And to do this, we're gonna use some computer fans. We got our computer fans. Now these connect up to simple USB plug. So we have a high, medium, and low setting. So I'm telling you right now, the high setting is really not that high. I'm gonna set it to that for now. And then we're gonna monitor our parameters. So I'll set it on high. 
let's find a good spot for each fan. Okay, now bear in mind that the majority of the lid is covered by plastic. So we probably need to just dip this a little bit on the front. I think I'm gonna have air forced in just a little, right? Just along here. So some fresh air will come in through this way and then I'll pull it back in the back over here so that we can have some air get sucked out, some of the hot air. And then we'll see where we're left after some time. The ambient temperature in here, as well as the humidity. With one fan blowing air out of the enclosure, as you can see here, I'm <laughs> making it clear, and another fan blowing air in, it was time to measure with a temperature and humidity gauge to see what we were working with. So initially, this was when I first set it up. You can see where I placed the probe. So essentially, we'll let that fan run for a while and then we'll document how the temperature and humidity is affected. So as you can see, the temperature is dropping drastically. Humidity is spiking because the mister turned on. So it wouldn't make sense otherwise because there's more ventilation and airflow now than before. But as you can see, the temperature is slowly dropping consistently. I think we have a solution at hand, but it's very important we get this regulated before moving the frogs into the tank. All right, everybody, so you can see a lot of the glass frogs are out right now. I had recently cleaned out the enclosure, but all the pothos that I put back is kind of wilted, so. It is timely that we get them into their new enclosure because it looks like crap in there and there isn't too many surfaces for them to sleep on during the day, so. Timing is good. There's 10 of them inside this enclosure. So I will show you how I do that. I have a cup here. Some paper towel on the bottom, just like that. And then a little lid here for ventilation. So literally we are just going in here. You see a frog, a little gummy. Try to gently. Hello, hi cutie. They are so cute. Goodness gracious, look at these. Look at these little amphibian friends. They're absolutely adorable. The tricky thing then is getting them to go into the cup. Cause as soon as you tilt a little bit, they usually do that. Excuse me. Hello friend. Oh, oh my gosh. Very fast, very, very fast. Let's try that again. Sorry, little buddy. Can you come with me in here? There we go. There is one. Perfect. Another one over here. Hello. This is one of the leaner ones, but they've put on a bit more weight, which is good. I thought if I don't see them put a lot of weight on, I'll probably keep a few separate, but for now though, we'll still give them a chance in the big enclosure altogether. There's one right here. Squizzy, Hello, little friend. Would you like to go to a new, really nice home? No, you would not. I see. Ah! They really hop. You have to keep a close eye where they're going because if you blink and they jump like that, they could be anywhere in your home. You really have to be so careful. Maybe lid goes on while we're catching. It doesn't have to be closed or not popping that off, but. Okay, friends, you guys get it. It's, it's not easy catching them. It's not easy finding them. The little gummy frogs are hopping around everywhere while you try and put them in the container. Okay, so we've got eight out of 10 frogs. There should still be two in here. Do you see any? Um, ideally or realistically, they're gonna be under any of the leaves that aren't shriveled. Oh, hello there, and one. Hi, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little frog. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen. There are so many little gummy frogs in here. I'm just gonna put a ninth frog in, or try to without losing any of the others. Okay. We got nine out of 10. Right under my nose. I've been looking for this frog everywhere and they were just sitting there the whole time. Camouflage master. All right, little one. 
Alright, you need to come with me, friend. Come on. We're going to a new, much better home. They're doing really well at eating pinhead crickets and Milanogaster fruit flies. As well as Heidi Eye. Alright, let's collect our last little friend and we'll make sure everything's ready for them to go into their new home. I'm sorry, but I just, I still need to <laughs> look at this. How crazy is this little container, little bundle container of joy? Little gummy frogs everywhere. Hi everybody. Too cool. Look at that. Got another froggy on the loose again. Cheeky, cheeky little buggers. Please remain calm. Please. Hey, remain calm, little friend. No need to go panic and pop away. Trust me, where you're going is way better than this. I assure you. Check this out, everyone. You can see that this female is ovulating. Those are all eggs in her body. So who knows, maybe if all goes well in the next tank, you might get lucky with a clutch very soon. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what is your favorite type of terrarium setup? Do you like paludariums? Do you like desert setups? Are you someone who enjoys more of a jungle vibe? Let me know in the comment section down below and tell me, what would you keep in the terrarium you would design as well? Are you someone who wants to set up an arid habitat? Maybe you love lush, tropical planted vivariums that have dart frogs. I'm interested to know in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll try to give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks. Oh, this is super interesting. Again, if you look closely, you can see this animal's female. She's even holding eggs. We have another one up here, also holding eggs. Another one next to her, also holding eggs. Here's another female holding eggs. Wow. Look at that. I assume a lot of these are male. Most likely another male there. Look at all of them. This is hilarious. Hello, friends. All right, let's move them in. Wish everybody good luck in their new home. The H flush Monty have settled into their new home. I started checking for them, and it looks like a lot of them have found suitable leaves to sleep under. It's pretty cool. After a full day of settling into the new home, dusk has arrived, and the frogs are waking up for their first full night in the paludarium. Time to feed the little guys. All right guys, so it's night time. <laughs> You can see a bunch of the frogs are out and they look adorable. Hello! They're waiting to be fed. So we're gonna go ahead and prepare some crickets for them. 
and then watch them hunt because they are waiting. They always do this. They chill and wait on the leaves for me to feed them. Here I've dusted some 1 4th inch crickets with Rapashi Calcium Plus. We're going to toss them into the enclosure and watch the frogs hunt. Oops, you missed little buddy. Friends, I want to take a moment to sincerely thank my patrons over on the Patreon platform. You guys are so, so supportive. It's one thing to watch all my content, like, thumbs up, engage. That's the best form of support, the easiest way. But for those of you that are looking to go a little bit further, gain access to all sorts of different perks, sneak peeks and more, have a direct line of communication with me and a lot of other things that you can find out more about in the website link description down below, you can become a patron for as little as $2 a month. And what I always like to do at the start of every video is thank our newest patrons. Just a little fun thing we do. So for today, we're thanking Sue, Cassie and Anne, who are my three newest patrons over on the platform. Thank you so much for becoming patrons and supporting Reptiliatus channel. I look forward to getting to know you all better and I'll chat with you there. Thanks so much, everybody. Well, everyone, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I think the paludarium has grown in phenomenally. It looks lush and verdant, and I'm confident that the plants are gonna continue to produce larger foliage to only benefit the frogs more. I have several friends that are successfully keeping glass frogs in paludarium setups, and essentially I've based what I'm doing here off of their success. Now, there are those who would suggest not keeping the animals in a paludarium setting because it can create a situation where animals are trying to breed constantly. If you find that that's the case, perhaps consider doing a fully terrestrial habitat and moving animals into a rain chamber if you want them to breed. But I'm gonna see how this goes, and naturally, if the animals seem stressed, if they seem to be losing weight, not doing well, then absolutely, we're gonna move the water out, lower it, which is part of the seasonal thing I wanna do with this regardless. I think it's important to know that in most cases, there's more than one right way to do something. And naturally, the animals come first. So if we see that it's not working well, we're gonna switch it up. I'm not proclaiming to be any sort of glass frog expert. I just wanna say this has been my experience I'm sharing and I'm having success with it. I've had these frogs for over a year and I know that they're doing well in my care. So I'm gonna to continue to keep them this way. I'm not preaching to the masses. This isn't for you all to say, Dion's doing it this way. This is the infallible way. I'm sharing my experience and what is working for me. But if you're keeping one or two glass frogs, I think it would be easier to set up a tank and have one small water dish that you're cleaning out regularly. I'm gonna do it this way and see how it goes. So I thank you very much for your consideration when watching this. Do your own research, decide how you wanna go about it. I think this is gonna work well. And again, my friends are doing the same thing and having a lot of success out west in Canada. Cool. With that all being said, if you wanna see more videos pertaining to terrarium builds, check out the playlist up above here. Otherwise, I can't wait to see you all next week for an upcoming exciting video. Maybe more on that in the community tab if you pay close attention to the channel. Thanks everybody and have an amazing day. Bye.